fast life to fast living. Fast living. They see the ambition, they know I'm past driven. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back on the Headwind Podcast. Thank you for being here and to listen and watch this episode. Today, I'm with Abigail Strait from Canada, from Calgary, more, more precisely. Um, apparently, she started ski jumping at, with six years old. Uh, with 20 years old, she got her first bronze medal at the Olympic in uh, 2002 in the Winter Olympic Games of uh, Beijing together with the teammate um, Alexandra Lutit, Matthew Sukup, and Mackenzie Boyd Cloud. Um, in my opinion, she is the rising star of this season, so really keep an eye on her. Abby, welcome on the Headwind podcast. How are you doing? Doing great. Uh, lovely Saturday today. Um, yeah, feeling, feeling good, getting ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow is a your first competition here in Titize. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we had training on. Do I, should I like lift this up or as, just just whatever as you want? Okay. Uh, yeah, we had training on Friday. Went pretty good, but no mixed team today. So nice day off. Played some volleyball. I think uh, you did the same thing. Yeah, yeah, we had some volleyball as well. It was pretty cool to, for me, to be part uh, of the team again and doing some some games. Uh, I think you also do some some volleyball with your team. So. Yeah. Yep. Great, great way to warm up and get some movement. Yeah, get some anger out on the coaches. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can you can fight them and yeah. it's okay. Yeah. All right. So let's jump straight in in the first company uh, first uh, question. So I have the feeling since the Olympic Games, like since the Olympic medal, that kind of gave you some new wings. I don't know. And well, since uh, since then. Um, or how, how did you, since then you're, you're really jumping super good. You, you've made like, um, five out of five wins uh, in continental cup in the summer. Um, so did, did, uh, this medal give you, um, a lot of confidence or are you working also, uh, with a mental coach to, to be more, yeah, to have more confident than just to perform so well now? Um, I think it was a lot of things. We had like a really big change to our whole team um, at the start of last summer. Mm -hmm. New coaches, we did get a new mental coach. We had a um, massage therapist and we fully moved to Slovenia. So it was like, we were like really in it for the Olympic season. And I think- uh, uh, So that happens before the Olympic? That happened in June. Yeah, in Ju before the Olympics. Okay, okay. That, that whole yeah. summer. So I'm not just saying, this summer, so- yeah, the previous, yeah, summer. The previous okay. summer. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was like, I mean, we worked really hard all summer. I started seeing like little ups and downs, but it was still like really fluctuating a lot. I had like another knee problem. I um, had to like sit out a few World Cups. And then I went to Beijing. Obviously, the mixed team competition was the highlight for, yeah. for all of us. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it went well. Um, I think I also, I proved my, uh, myself in the training before the mixed team after the individual event, after my event mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the training, I had some like top threes and that was, that was a huge confidence boost. And then the next, the, the, the mixed team day, I just was like, Hey, I got, I mean, I've got nothing to lose. Um, we weren't really expecting it. Obviously it was a weird competition for everybody. It was definitely a yeah. weird competition, but for me, for, for watching on TV, it was, it was just so great that, that you guys could, could made it to the podium. It was, it was so beautiful somehow. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was it's a beautiful moment for us too. <laughs> it was uh, definitely unique, but I think we all still performed really well. Um, we did exactly what we were supposed to do in the second round, especially when there was already that pressure of, okay, all of a sudden maybe we'll be winning like a historic medal. Um, and yeah, that, I mean, obviously it, it gave me a confidence boost. It, I was still like working really hard um, up to that point and after that point, but having the medal and knowing that you know, things like that were possible. It, it fueled, I think the rest of my season. And it also, that was one of my biggest goals in my career, um, as an athlete. And then once we did that a lot earlier than I expected, I think mm. now I'm just like, okay, well that was awesome. Like yeah. that made me feel great. And it just, I have all these new goals now that I know I can achieve and that I'm working towards. So that's cool. Yeah. And 
so you just said earlier you had new coaches coming, um, physiotherapist and also mental coach. Did you did you work on something specific with this with this coach, or was it more like uh, general um, themes with the team together, or did you really work one to one with this uh, mental coach? It's top secret. It's no, top I'm secret. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We started. Um, I mean, first we did a lot of team stuff. Just she wanted to um, figure out our whole dynamic and. Uh, yeah, she, I, first it was team stuff and then we worked on more individual things. I think for me, the biggest thing that I had to work on that I'm still working on is like, it sounds kind of cheesy, but literally having confidence in myself and knowing that mm -hmm. I belong up there just as much as any other strong oh, yeah, nation I, does. I know this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that one, you know, when you come from somewhere like Canada or Switzerland, but maybe doesn't have huge teams or huge resources like everyone else, it's hard to be on the World Cup and to be like, okay, I belong here, you know? Yeah. And that was something, yeah. I needed that. Like, she helped me kind of realize that I did belong there, that I had put in the work, that I had put in the hours, and ultimately made more sacrifices than anybody else because we're yeah. not handed everything that all the the big these big nations are handed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So that was what I worked on with her. And I also, I used to get, like, really, really anxious when I competed, like, really bad. I would... Like my heart would be. You would feel it yeah, right here, I and, feel it. and then it, it's almost like yeah, you cannot breathe anymore. I would, I, I would like completely black out. Honestly, the whole ski jump when I was really little, like all right, yeah, yeah. I would just nothing in my head, no idea what would happen, and and completely mess up. Which that also made it hard for me to believe in myself because I was like, every time I go to compete, this happens. Um, but yeah, I, I I think I fixed that so far. It's like I I don't even know really what. Do you for work me. with? Um, breathing exercise or is it more mental pictures i think or, it's or is it the whole setup before you start I think, before you go to the hill for example or i think i just had to like con i really had to convince myself that it doesn't really matter that much like ski jumping is great and we're all passionate about this we all want to achieve our goals but at the end of the day there's way there's there's a huge world out there and there's way worse things that can happen than not jumping good in a competition And I think once I lifted that pressure off of myself and just said, you know, like, you've put in the training. Let's see, this is like your reward for what you've done, for what you've trained for. Uh, then like the confidence came and it was it was easy. Yeah. Easier. <laughs> yeah, somehow, sometimes for, for myself as well, um, it was also difficult for me because then then you are kind of disappointing yourself as a first, but also all the coaches, they are there. And that's also sometimes a bit difficult to... to release it to to just get off this yeah. this this mental um state yeah you feel like sometimes when you're up there you feel like there's a lot of people watching and a lot of people that are going to be disappointed in you but really you also just have to tell yourself that nobody is really disappointed in you everyone is really really happy and proud of you when you do well but if you don't <laughs> i mean if you don't do good you're really only going to disappoint your, yourself mm, mostly, and you can yeah. you can do two things with that you can either say okay look this happened, I'm going to learn from this and do better next time. Or you can completely beat yourself up, destroy yourself, and then it's only going to get worse. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So. yeah. And you were saying earlier as well, um, well, you, you kind of, you had the, the feeling you don't belong here because you're from a s s small ski jumping nation. I mean, Canada is huge, but uh, ski jumping was, it's not a, a big nation. So did, um, so first of all, how, how did you, become ski jumper how how did you start it, this 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 sport uh well i'm from calgary and we had we had ski jumps at the time little yeah, ones true, yeah. I, i did a uh a summer camp and we tried a bunch of different sports i don't even can't even remember we, we biked we uh we didn't ski it was a summer camp so anyways yeah. <laughs> we we tried a bunch of different things and ski jumping was one of them mm -hmm. just you know a little 10 meter hill alpine skis yeah with the plastic and yeah. everything yeah and Then they came up, I was only six, but they came up to my mom after and they were like, oh, she should, she should be a ski jumper. And my mom was like, oh, I don't know. And then they handed her like, here's a month for free, try it. And then okay, I, yeah. I did it from there and yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't stop me. I just, so it was not really, it, it just happened uh, just like that. Somehow it was not a wish from you. You didn't watch it at, on, on TV and you knew it before what it was. It just, yeah. 
it just happened you were there at the right time and yeah there exactly you go. it just it just happened i remember i remember being really little and like looking up at the tower the really big towers at the at cop mm -hmm. in yep. calgary and i was like okay who would be like crazy stupid enough to go off of that but i, I mean did it eventually <laughs> yeah that's great it's cool 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 do you have uh, some some idols some idols um Yeah, growing up, I idolized um, Etsuko Tanaka. She's a Canadian ski jumper. Yeah. She um, competed in Sochi. And yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, she, when I was really little, she coached me. And then uh, we, I kind of like was coming on to the national team and we became friends. She was always really, really nice to me. I didn't, I mean, I, I look at someone's character and personality more than I would look at Yeah. Obviously, you look, that's at, great. That's look cool. at ski yeah. jumping and you can be like, okay, that's a great ski jump. I idolize that ski jump. But at the end of the day, there's still like a person. So for yeah. for the heart and the character, um, Atsuko, I also always really liked Yuki, Yuki Ito. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, yeah. lots of the men's ski jumpers. I'm like, I would jump like that. I would yeah. take that. Yeah, 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 sure. It's fun to watch. And since now you have your... Your base in Slovenia, you said. Um, how difficult is it for you to be so far away from home, and for so long? I mean, I, I don't know exactly how long you're you're staying always in in Slovenia, but probably during the winter, most of the winter, yeah. and during the summer, probably one or two months at a time. So, how is it? How is it to to be so much apart, with also the friends, family? Yeah. Um, well, so for an actual timeline, I was, I came to Europe in June and then I went home in October. So I was yeah. here okay, that's all good. summer. Uh, I went, I went home for 10 days and half of those days we were doing like a, a media like training. It was like a mandatory thing. So it's been, it's been a long year so far this, this yeah, season, okay. but I'm going home for Christmas. Nice. Kind, kind cool. of. Okay. Kind of. Okay. I'm going home on Monday the 12th and then i'm coming back yeah. to europe on the 22nd so just before okay. christmas because yeah. we compete so soon after that i couldn't really like yeah. time it right because yeah. the flight from canada even if i flew out on christmas day i would get into europe on the 26th and then we have quali on the 27th so you have this uh the this this uh, sylvester sylvester yeah. yeah 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 i had this bird and was yeah. it called differently before no or? it's no oh, okay but the ah, the trophy but the, is the trophies uh, yeah. yeah i saw the picture it's a yeah. really nice trophy yeah. it's so. cool Maybe. So and that start already in the, uh, 20, the 27th. 27th. Okay. Yeah. Ah, it's almost, yeah. or is it the same, probably it's the same as the uh, Four Hills tournament. I think the Four Hills is the 29th. 29th? I oh. think so. Maybe. Yeah, probably They're that's. Close. Uh, well, that's probably already Garmisch 29th. Or the. Ah, oh, no, 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 the quality. The competition is probably on 29th in Norbert mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, to answer your question, it's it's not easy. It's definitely yeah. hard. Um. The winter is, for me, easier because I'm busy. Like, we have yeah, somewhere to be exactly, every weekend. Yeah. And then by the time we get home, we're back home. See, I, I, I call Slovenia home sometimes. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of home. Um, by the time we get back there, it's like, hey, you have three days to rest and, like, work out, get your legs back in shape, and then you're competing again. So the winter isn't the hard part. The hard part is, I think, the lead up to it. Yeah. And yeah. that's also the hardest training period when you're – doing you put in all the work before the season and by the time the season starts you're you sh you're there you're doing like little trainings in between but um like the summer was really long i don't know it was it was different i had um like decker i'm, I'm dating decker he was in mm -hmm. slovenia the the summer before and it was a lot easier because he was there i didn't think so much about my family and yeah. my friends okay yeah but then the the us is working with norway now and i was like Surprised yeah, by how there, much there, earlier I felt. Uh, there's a split now. With yeah. The, you you were training with the US team before, yeah. obviously, and and now you're you're kind of by on yourself. Yeah. Or... Yeah. So I found myself. I miss my family a lot more mm, now. Yeah. But it's part of the. It's part of it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I. It, it's hard to look yeah, at it optimistically, it is, yeah. but I. I'm. My parents are coming to world champs, so that's cool. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> First time. Pretty in sweet. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's uh it's where you live, yeah, it's I guess. Home, home it's hills. home, so we don't have you, home you hills. Can, so uh, you can also Slovenia's show them a little bit how where you live and 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 so on. Yeah, ah, that's cool. Good, good. Um, a little bit uh, another theme. The 
the women's ski jumping is a is a really young sport in the in the World Cup level. Um, I mean, the women are jumping since quite long, but it took really long until they they really were allowed to have a World Cup and compete on also bigger hills. It's coming slowly. Um, so do do you do you get a lot of comparison with the uh, with the men from from the media or from the trainer maybe or how is it or or are you or can you be focused on yourself as a as as women's or doing your sport basically i've been thinking about this a lot like recently actually but i think it's it's really hard to make a comparison since women's ski jumping is a lot younger i don't really com i don't i don't feel like i comparing myself to like a men's ski jumper is is a fair comparison just like based on strength mm, and yeah. and just the amount of years that it's been around also um i feel like women's ski jumping is definitely progressing fast especially recently um mm -hmm. and coming into yep. like the first season with ski flying i don't feel i don't feel like my coaches are putting like pressure on me because we're not jumping at the same level as the men But yeah, I don't. I don't really know how to how to answer that question. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's uh, no problem. I I find it interesting getting into talks with men ski jumpers about it. Like some some of them some of them seem really opinionated about it, and some of them are like, women ski are, jumping what, is awesome. Men yeah. ski jumping is awesome, but they're like kind of different. What are they saying? Is those who are have big strong opinions about it? Uh, is it is it negative or is it positive or is it neutral or? <laughs> Do you have an example for or not so much? <laughs> I don't want to like out anybody. Well, I, you don't have to say names. <laughs> uh, I don't really hear much, many negative things about about it. I mean, obviously we take more speed than the guys. Yeah, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, the... I, yeah. I don't. I don't really know. I don't really know what to say about that. I yeah. haven't really heard anything negative about it. <laughs> okay, and uh, still. Uh, The, the women's ski jumping is not on the same um, level in terms of, of equality. So what do you think it still needs to be done to, to, to fix that? Uh, ski flying, I mean, ski flying. but they're doing that. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a really good step this season. I think mm -hmm. it's yeah. the way that they're doing it is good with the top 15 because I think it's important that they yeah. showcase, a, they show a strong example of it not that i don't think that there's more women that can't do it but it's important that the first year they set a really good example so that it can keep progressing you wouldn't want yeah, something yeah, exactly you know. it's it's uh, somehow similar that uh for example now the qualification it's only top 40 mm. for normal competition and then uh, top top 30 for the second round and for men it's like yeah. obviously top 50 uh, qualification so That might also change at some point. You might get also at some point top 50 for a qualification because there is also more women coming to ski jumping mm. because it's also going to, to the media, to the television. And with those mixed team, I think it's also great, a great way to, to have a competition and, and integrate also women in ski jumping and see. And, and we could see, uh, for example, well, today it was the first competition or I think it was the first mixed competition during the winter. And well, the jumps they were also long, and that was that was really great to see. Yeah, I think that the mixed mixed team is a great. I mean, personally, mixed team has a special place in my heart. But I yeah. think <laughs> I think it's a uh, it's fun. I mean, it's it's fun to take an individual sport and turn it into something that you do with people and that you mm -hmm. rely on. Mm -hmm. I always thought that was like a really unique experience. Um, and then doing it with the men and the women again, it, it is a great. It's a it's a special stage. For the women when we don't get as much media attention yeah. um having us also at the same venues on the same weekends i think is cool i mean we're all we uh, are all doing the same sport yeah. it's fun to yeah it's fun and, and, to and i think also like uh it, it takes a lot of energy and and time to prepare the hills uh so why not just just use it and yeah. make uh, two competition instead of one there yeah. so for that it's it's pretty cool yeah yeah i think uh obviously all the big hill competitions that's That's progressing a lot. Also, we have, I don't even know. Yeah, we, I mean, we've got more big hill competitions now. I jump good on like small hills. So I'm kind of like, I hope they keep mm -hmm. a, a few yeah. of them. Um, 
but I'm learning on the big hills too. So they're fun. They're fun to fly on. Um, it's like, that's where you set personal bests yeah. also. So yes, uh, s somehow I'm, I also wish sometimes uh, I will, well, probably a lot of people will hit what I'm saying, but, um, all big competition competitions, they have a small hill and big hill. And in the World Cup, in the men comp in the men calendar, there is almost only big hills, mm -hmm. and it's and it somehow it, it it's a bit too bad because you could almost add a few more small hills competition, have one globe, and then you have like one big globe and two small globes mm -hmm. for f ski flying and small hills, mm -hmm. and that would make the sport I think more attractive. Now maybe also with the with the team competitions. Uh, mixed team, super team, there's all kind of... Yeah, the super team. I think we have yeah. a women's super team you do? in Japan. Yeah. I think it's in Zao. All right. Yeah. Um, cool. Oh, I thought of something, but I forgot. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? I uh, can't remember. Oh. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, like, obviously, there's certain jumpers that prefer the large hills and the, that prefer the small yeah. ones. I mean, I think everybody wishes that they could love the big ones or jump better on the big ones because th that's like that's like... You fly farther. It's it's more fun. Yeah, it should be, but it's definitely. It's, I I also agree. It's definitely more fun to to yeah. fly longer in the air. Yeah. But some people's it's also, technique is just fit for a smaller hill. Yeah. And and I'm like still, poor them, the poor guys that jump better on, on small, small hills. hills. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and in, in the end, I mean, uh, winning on small hill or big hill, uh, it's no it's no no Only difference. I mean, that's yeah. uh, if you if you win a gold medal on the on the small hill or on the big hill at the Olympics, I think uh, gold to gold. Gold is gold, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I saw on YouTube you are doing some vlogging a little bit. Is it? Is it you did, I think your last vlogs, they were only on Instagram, I guess. I did not not find them on your YouTube channel. Uh, is it just a hobby for you? Is it is the way also to share what you're doing with your family and friends that cannot be there during the summer, maybe? Yeah, it started uh, not this summer, the summer before. I was doing them a lot because I wasn't in school. So I was like, I've got a lot of time. I'm just going to start filming this. And I've always kind of had like a, a passion for... Creativity. Yeah, I'm I'm in art school now, so it, it all makes yeah. sense in the end. But uh, it's harder for me to do them while I'm competing because I find I get to the comp day. And I'm, not that I'm like super focused, like I've never been that kind of athlete, but... I just like find myself so absorbed in the whole environment of the competition that I forget to like pull out my phone and be like, oh, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then I, I was doing school this summer, so it was also harder. And it was our second year in Slovenia, so not nothing was like that new and fresh anymore. Mm -hmm. Even though it might be fun for somebody to watch, I just wasn't feeling as like keen to take out my camera and film it. But um, taking the winter off of school, so maybe I'll japan vlog <laughs> how do you how do you um do the school is it is it uh online school from from canada or how's it working yeah it's it's online i do uh yeah. i'm in graphic design so it's it's like it's a digital kind of program anyways it's yeah it, it's like the perfect thing for me to be doing while i can't be at home and it's yeah. it's all online it's yeah. it's easy i don't have to okay. go there ever it's actually like the school itself is on the other side of Canada. So then oh, from where yeah. I live. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't, I mean, I wouldn't really go there anyways. Yeah. Okay. And um, in your vlogs, uh, I saw a few times like you were filming the food or when you were eating with everyone else. And when I check also Instagrams from uh, other ski jumpers, they, there is so often food pictures and stories and stuff like that. So... Do you do you do you need to watch out your weight a lot, or is because this is always a theme that ski jumper they are so thin and they don't eat anything, and mm -hmm. in the end, if if you are really following the the athlete, they you see they are eating and they are healthy and everything like that. So, is it is it for you all right, or how you still need to watch a little bit, or? Um, I think. I think just always watching from like past experience, I, I'm not the kind of person that can just completely let myself go and expect to be in the proper shape to, to perform. So always uh, watching, but I've also been to the extreme and I think there's like a balance 
You need to yeah. be able to perform mm -hmm. and you need to be strong. And from my personal experience, I have, uh, you know, for me, jumping the best has not been when I was my lightest. It's been when I've been like strong and healthy and also light because it's still a flying yeah. sport. And that's it. But I think it's a balance and mm -hmm. food is just great. I mean, food is one of the only things we need to like survive. And it's obviously a really enjoyable yeah. experience. Yeah, definitely. So when you have <laughs> to like, agree. when you have to like regiment yourself and it's, I think maybe showing showing the good stuff on social media is because it's like you're so you're just so like happy when there's like good food in front of you. Yeah, it's but it's not so that you also only eat salad. It, yeah, you can really you you still can eat normally. I guess you don't you you're not struggling too much with that. Yeah. You have to. I mean, to to like exist and be able to yeah to like yeah. be a human and be like nice to other people too like i feel mm -hmm, bad mm -hmm. when i'm like when i'm like not not eating i just turn into like this like you don't want to be around me <laughs> okay yeah especially when i haven't had like chocolate in a week i'm like don't want to be there be careful then <laughs> <laughs> watch out all right good uh well we are getting to the end and i have um the last questions and i call it um the four questions tournament mm-hmm so are you ready for that? It should be the two questions tournament because uh, there's only two hills in our four hills. Uh, All right. But I, 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 I hear... Uh, we're I think we're I, optimistic. There'll be a four, four hills. Uh, but is someday. next year going to happen? I don't a four know. hills tournament for the ladies or... Maybe. Maybe. I don't know anything it's not, about It's that. not official yet? Not official. Okay. I don't think it's official. So now it's only two. It's only two. But, but I'm we'll optimistic and, and we are keeping those four questions then. Yeah. And they're on normal hills, so... Yeah. Well, well, you will get there. <laughs> uh, I I believe strongly that you will get there, because yeah, uh, yeah they they need to be a bit open minded mm -hmm. in my in yes. my opinion. All right. First question: What was your toughest toughest moment in sport? There's many. Um, I think toughest moment right off the bat, the first thing that comes to my mind is knee injury, like mm -hmm. blowing off. What my was knee. it exactly? Uh, ACL? ACL, LCL, yeah. meniscus, surgery. Bleh. Yeah. Uh, but that feels like so. It feels like a long, a long time. It happened in 2019. But if that yeah. feels like a yeah. long time away. But anyways, that was that's like physically the first thing that comes to mind for me. Mm -hmm. I don't. I like to say that's like my biggest struggle, but I don't actually think that that was. I think it was maybe. I think what we were talking about earlier with the confidence and the actual mental training was the biggest yeah. obstacle that I had to yeah. overcome. It was like a. a that was like a, like a ro long road, a long path yeah. to to get there. Yeah. And the knees, it's it's also long, but it's maybe yeah. one one half year if yeah. it's if it's not so good. And I knew like, okay, the knee, I'm gonna get it better. I'm gonna be jumping again. Exactly. But it's like yeah. if I can't get my head in line, then I'm never gonna achieve my goals. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, physically, uh, the knee. Yeah. But really, the, it was the mental challenges. Okay. Yeah. Good. Second question. Um, what are your goals for the future? Goals for the future. Um, my goal was an Olympic medal and I did that. So a little early. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, definitely I, I like podiums. The, the dream goal would be the overall to win the overall. Yep. Um, nice. if there's a four hills tournament, that'd be cool too. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. Well, that like, will probably develop as well somehow. Yeah, I. I don't want to sound like full of myself, but obviously, I want to like win everything. I mean, mm. that's like a really ambitious full of goal. Ambition, yeah. Ambitious goal. Obviously, like I can't just do that. I have to. I've got like steps up there. So for this season, um, I've already got a top six. So I. I want to be on the podium. At some yeah, point you this will. Season. You will get there. You will get yeah, there. Yeah, that's 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 the next step goal, and then bigger goals are out there for the future. Good. Very nice. Third question. Winter or summer ski jumping? I've always been a summer jumper. Yeah? Yep. All I've right. always liked the summer jumping. I think it's something about it being consistent. The hill, the landing yeah. hill, especially having dealt with injuries. I like knowing every time when I come into land that it's going to be the same nice as the jump before. Forward. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I, I kind of hate about myself because... It's like a winter sport and everyone's always like, oh, winter, winter. And I'm like, oh, where's the plastic? <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah. I think this season will be different because I've never come into a winter season with this much confidence mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. 
knock on wood, no injuries and not really any Olympic pressure, which has been there before. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I can get my confidence back on snow. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, somehow when when people also ask me like, yeah, but is it is it more difficult to jump in the summer? I'm like, no, it's actually easier because the track is always the same yeah. and the landing is always the same yeah. and then you just break in the grass and that's it yeah and the winter it can change from one jump to another yeah which and that's makes crazy it fun, which also makes it fun it makes it fun but if you if you are not aware it can yeah. can be quite tricky yeah it's summer um, yeah. i like the sun too yeah i like like feeling the sun on my on my skin and like being able to take your your suit off in the winter yeah. like my toes get so cold i'm like it's not worth it <laughs> well, <I> think... <laughs> sometimes i ask myself i'm like why am i in a winter sport as i'm sitting there like heating up by the yeah. fire after yeah. okay all right fourth and last question what's your favorite hill favorite hill i read this question before and i was like i should have thought about this more but um whistler whistler yeah whistler big hill i've only jumped it once in competition and i don't think i was jumping good enough to like do it justice mm -hmm. but something about being like in Canada and seeing the view at the top of that jump is amazing. The mountains, the snow. Yeah. yeah. I just have really, I have a really great memory there. I also really like, uh, Kron, Slovenia, Kran, mm -hmm. or I don't know. I always say it like Kron, slightly wrong. Kron, yeah, I yeah. don't know how to pronounce also in Slovenian. So I like that hill though. I like when hills are built into the ground. Mm -hmm. You feel like yeah. you're nice and it's like oh, that. Well, then like you should come to Engelberg. That's a, they that's always say every year thing. that that's the biggest natural hill in. Yeah. Well, I, obviously, planet size bigger and in Vickerson, but I think they are meaning like the biggest normal hill or yeah. like big hill and not I, ski jump, uh, ski flying hill. I just but, love when yeah. you when it looks like a ski jump is supposed to be there. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's like that was meant to be. Sometimes when I'm driving in the car and I like look out my window, I'm just like, they, there should be a ski jump there. This is perfect. Yeah, there are so many places. Sometimes it, I even think I a, see one. Yeah. I'm like, is that, no, I'm in Canada. That's not a ski jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been once in Whistler for the Canadian Championships. That was many years ago, but it was such a great trip there. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And yeah, I've been jumping, I think, on both hills, the small and the big hill, yeah. with a lot of snowing. I think we landed. It was powder, but yeah. it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we are already at the end of this of this um, podcast. Thank you very much for your time. Of course. Thanks for having me. And Talk. I wish you then the best for the for the rest of the season. You too. And thank you. <laughs> thank you and have fun and well, hopefully we'll see probably somewhere during the World Cup at some point. Yep. yep. Sounds good. Good. If nothing else, I guess world champs. Yeah. At Everybody the latest. Will be there. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was like my vlog style. <laughs> <laughs>